Hey guys, it's John, your Tennessee flying farmer. Uh, I think we're on day 10 of the build, 31 day build challenge. Um, trying to get just a little bit done today before I have to go down and mix feed for the cattle. Again, I haven't got a huge amount done just yet because it's, well, it's just been so busy, but um, do have, I got it apart there yesterday. Most of it disassembled again. I've got it blocked up here to where I can weld this cabin frame. You see the, the little mark I've got there. This is the hole I'm going to weld up on both sides. And I'm doing that so I can re-drill it to a smaller size so it'll handle the threads for my 832 finishing screws and washers. So that's what I'm about to work on this morning. I'll see if I can get a little more done depending on how much time I have. Um, anyway, let's get to it. This guy's good. Now, here's our farmer, John Humbred. Look at that! Oh my God! That was Whoa. good. Okay, I got the hole welded up on both sides of the cabin frame, the crow molly cabin frame. There's the hole I welded up. I'm getting ready to sand it back smooth with, with the tube. And once I get that done, I will bore a hole in it that's a little bit smaller so I can put a Clico in it and then eventually thread it to match the other screws that I'll have in there. I had a question asking what thickness of crow molly tubing I'm using. I believe on the 701, the Zenith uses 35 thousandths. Um, on the Super Duty, I think it may be 49 thousandths. I'm not totally sure on that. I'll have to look at my specs. Or um, if you want to know for sure, probably give Zenith a call. The pieces that I have welded in that go up toward my engine mount, um, if I remember right, that was 35 thousandths. And then this piece that goes across my instrument panel and back over is actually five eighths instead of three quarter. And it's a little bit thinner yet. I just didn't need that heavy of material just to go there and across. Um, and of course this, these front pieces are all tied into the cross members on the firewall. So there should be quite a bit of structural integrity there. Okay. I'm slowly starting to put stuff back together. Um, I got, I've got to get stuff back together so I can kind of see how the, the final fit on a lot of this stuff is and see what's what's next, what I have to trim, what, I, what I've forgot to do while I've got it apart. So I'm sure it'll come back apart again. But anyway, putting it back together. Something I'll mention real quick. I know my setup's a little bit odd with this cabin frame chromoly stuff, all those little cross tubes going up to the firewall. I'll, I'll show you that a little more when I get the engine mount on it, but I wanted to explain sort of how the, the standard kit comes. Uh, the Super Duty kit, uh, just the normal kit comes with a standard instrument panel, so the panel goes all the way across, kind of like in my 701. When you have that standard kit, it has this chromoly brace that runs from side to side, kind of like that. And then the panel essentially just mounts to the top of that and goes up from there from side to side. So anyway, to, to do my center pod, or if you decide to go with the unpaneled setup or whatever, you eliminate that. You don't. You just really don't need it. Uh, the factory demo doesn't have anything there cross brace wise. Mine, since I'm going with the turbo UL power, it's making you know quite a bit of torque and extra power. I've decided to go ahead and put the extra the extra mounts in there for the engine mount. There's extra, So my engine mount has seven attachment points to the firewall and those two extra ones hook into that up there where that cross brace is in the firewall and they come back to the cabin frame. So you'll see a little more here as I get it put back together. Along with that custom work and trying to get all this to work around the firewall, I also had to build my own custom intercooler. So turbo feeds air through the intercooler. It comes out that side and around to the intake of the engine. I'll put that back on the firewall and then put the engine mail in there so you guys can get a little, little better picture of what I'm actually dealing with here. Okay, I've got stuff going back together. You can see I've got the engine mount back up there, firewall's back on. Um, I'm gonna have to wrap it up here though. I've got a lot of other stuff I've got to get done. Let me show you real quick sort of an idea and then I'll try to get the engine actually mocked up there maybe tomorrow so you can look at it closer. So I custom built the engine mount. Um, it's, well, it's different than anything I've really seen before. Hopefully it'll work, right? I had to 
bend some tubes and really cut and whittle to make everything fit. And it's gonna be a genuine challenge to make everything fit even now that I've got that done. Um, basically, this engine mount is six inches shorter than the one you can buy off the shelf. So it, it sets, the, sets the CG, you know, it, well, not six inches back, but it'll bring the engine six inches back, which will offset the center of gravity some to the aft of the airplane. I've done a lot of figuring. I think it's going to work out really well, but time will tell. Anyway, as far as the mount goes, the standard mount has both side mounts to the firewall. It actually goes to the laundry on there. There's a bracket that attaches all that down to the, the extrusion. So you've got one on each side of the firewall for that on the standard setup. It goes up into the V, which goes up to the top of the cabin frame. So that, that all connection is standard. The lower ones are standard. They go to into another extrusion that run underneath the fuselage. So what I've done, just because I want the extra strength and I, you know, I really, really don't want the torque to be an issue and it's, it's short and I couldn't get you see how the angles are really shallow over there on the other side. I couldn't get the triangulation exactly the way I wanted it. So to compensate and try to add a little extra rigidity and structure, I've added the two extra attachment points and they go up underneath the shelf on the firewall. And they attach through that so it's sandwiched a bunch of different layers together. Anyway, it goes through and on the other side of the firewall, it directly connects to the tubes here which come back to the cabin frame and they're all welded in. So I'm, I've tried to make it just as structurally sound as I can and still keep it as lightweight as possible. You can see the intercooler is tucked in there pretty tightly with the engine mount. I've, I think I've got it all kind of fit up. Uh, as I said earlier, this side comes from the turbo. The turbo pushes the air through the intercooler comes out this side and it goes through a intake pipe I've got made that comes over and through and above and into the engine. You'll see that here in the next video. And then one of my struggles is I have to get air through this intercooler to be able to cool off the air that's passing through it for the engine. So with it being a rear mount, I'm going to have to make a scoop probably on the top of the cow. And I've got a form kind of going that will bring the scoop down and push through the intercooler, which is, <laughs> well, things are getting just incredibly tight. So like I said, I'll try to get a little more mocked up and get it to where you can see, see a little closer next time. Okay, wrapping up. Uh, I had one other question from YouTube. I don't remember which day it was now, but anyway, which lights am I going to be using? Uh, I used the Aero LED. I think it's micro sun on the super 701 i've had really good luck with them they've been maintenance free trouble free i'm going to do the same thing with this super duty it is aero led micro suns get them uh, you can still get these straight through zenith i believe they've merged with another company now but as far as i know that's still very much available anyway that's a wrap for today again i really appreciate you guys comments likes uh share if you like my content thank you for watching and I'll catch you tomorrow. See ya.